And do you want to learn how to make spreadable sausage at home? Well, today on WTF, we're going to show you how to use umai bags to make the Italian spreadable sausage in Duya. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients, techniques, and show you new recipes for your kitchen. So subscribe and ring the bell and you'll get notified of our episodes. And remember, we are doing a giveaway every single week, so watch and enter to win. And this week, we are going to be showing you how to make the Italian sausage and duya in your kitchen and well, that's pretty interesting because traditionally you can't make these types of sausages in a home kitchen without special equipment mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about anduya and what makes it different from you know most of the hard sausages that we're familiar with it's different in that it's technically not a hard sausage although it goes through like a, a drying process and it is uh, like a long-term ferment it's a spreadable sausage so that is completely different than almost any other sausage out there the good thing about that is that it can be added to a lot of different recipes, ingredients, sauces, anything, mm -hmm. because it does almost dissolve and kind of incorporate into whatever you put it into. That's really interesting. And what makes it a spreadable sausage? It's the incredibly high amount of fat. Uh, <laughs> so basically, this right here is ground pork belly. So All I got right. fresh pork belly, and I ground it. Uh, you want to go for the, obviously, the leanest part of the pork belly, if there is such a thing. But mm -hmm. if you go with the tail end, you're going to end up with something like 60 or 70 percent fat. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't really work because it just isn't enough protein to hold on. So you want to go with a you know good portion of the lean along with like the tail end, which is that really fatty part. But the more fat that you have in it, the e more easily spreadable it will be. This is about uh, seven days of fermentation. You can see if I press on it, mm -hmm. it's still very soft and that's yes. perfect. You don't want to go any further than this. Not that it would dry up, it's just this is done at this point. Mm. You can then take it and cut it and spread it. Put it on a charcuterie plate or add it to just about anything and it's going to okay. be awesome. So All I right. think we can kind of get into the demo just to see, you know, how to make the Induya and then we can talk a little bit more about it as we go. Mm -hmm. So Induya, just like any other sausage, it requires meat, it requires salt, and it requires a little bit of emulsification. So I have salt that I just added there mm -hmm. and I'm going to go with prog powder number two. You cannot use prog powder number one. This is not a short term uh, ferment. You can't take this, put prog powder number one and leave it in your refrigerator. This must be held outside uh, you know, in room temperature to properly ferment. And that's where another issue comes in. Like you said, mm -hmm. you need special equipment generally to do that. Right. Right. But uh, not with this recipe. All right. So I'm going to have that in there. And then one other ingredient that we're going to go into is the emulsifier, which is sodium caseinate. Generally, you're going to do about 10% sodium caseinate. Mm -hmm. It's all cold, so it's a little condensation. Uh, but you're going to go around five for this because you don't want too much protein to grab onto that fat and okay. emulsify and then end up with a firmer sausage than you want. Mm. So about 5% is going to be perfect just to hold on so it's not dripping out the end of your bag here. Interesting. And the bags, I guess we can talk about. I'm going to mix this up and we can talk about that. All so right. just very slowly, I'm just going to get this mixed up with a paddle attachment until it's uniform. Mm -hmm. About 30 seconds to a minute. Yeah, and while that's mixing, can you talk a little bit about the umai bags that we're using in order to actually make this happen and what makes the umai bag special? So the umai bag is like a special membrane that allows uh, moisture out but nothing to get in. So oxygen can't get in, uh, pathogens can't get in, but all the moisture can get out. So a little bit of fermentation happens, that moisture will then, you know, uh, be you know whisked, whisked away by the, uh, the umai bag and then you're left with like that proper, you know, acidic sausage that comes from the fermentation. Let me just turn this off, so that's perfect at the moment. But you get, you know, all the benefits of keeping keeping it out without having to do like a quick, uh, short-term fermentation. So it's a really amazing uh, 
product, and we actually have the Umai bag, which are like the charcuterie, so we're able to place it and you know, pump it into here just like you would like a normal sausage mm -hmm. maker. You can put it right onto the die for that. And with Induya, you don't really need it to be too beautiful. Right. Yeah. So I just take one of the steak bags. Mm -hmm. If you happen to have one of those, they work just fine. I do suggest just zip tying the top of it just to kind of bind mm -hmm. it up because from here you can still you know, spread it, you can take it, you can add it to something else and you don't have to do all the work. Let's say you don't have a sausage press, these work just fine. Okay. Right, just need a, a zip tie at the top just like you need them at the ends here. Hmm. So I have this here and now I'm gonna add my spices. And there aren't many spices with this, but we have spicy paprika. It's a lot, mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is correct. It may seem like too much, um, but that's on purpose. So that's the spicy paprika, it's the majority of it. And generally with Andouille, you would take it, you would place it into, a, um, I believe, a pork bung, and then you would smoke that just quickly just to get the smoke on the outside. With this, it's very difficult to smoke, right. so I just use smoked paprika. So we get the smokiness from the smoked paprika. So generally with this, it would just be a bittersweet paprika. I just go with a smoked and then a spicy, mm -hmm. right? And the smoked one doesn't have any heat or anything like that. Okay. I'm gonna add fructose here and I'll talk about that in just one second. So fructose is uh, a sugar from fruit mm -hmm. and it's a little bit sweeter than um, table sugar. But the reason why I use that is because I need Bactoferm. Bactoferm is uh, some bacteria basically that you put in that ferments certain sugars and helps prevent the, uh, the meat from spoiling. Mm -hmm. The prog powder does a great job of that and the Bactoferm also does a great job of that. So I'm just going to dissolve this into some water. All right. And why did you need the fructose with the bactoferm and not sugar? Great question. If you use regular sugar, the bactoferm can't dissolve it. It can't digest it. So you have to use either fructose or dextrose. Mm -hmm. If not, you're going to end up slightly sweet uh, sausage and no acidity because right. it cannot dissolve the, uh, mm. you know, it cannot break down. It cannot consume sucrose. It has to consume dextrose or fructose. So I'm just going to mix this All right. Up well, we quick. carry both here in Modernist Pantry, <laughs> so you can take your pick. So I'm just going to dissolve mm -hmm. that, and we can add that last. I want to go nice and slow and incorporate these spices. So this takes about 30 seconds once again. Sausage is a really quick thing once you have all your mise en place. Once you have everything, it's very quick. So 30 seconds to mix in the, the salt. That salt pulls out um, you know, soluble proteins, which then now I'm emulsifying just slightly with the uh, the fat. Mm -hmm. I'm mixing in my spices. This is going All right. And perfectly. I know when we've made other sausages, you talked a lot about looking for like a certain level of creaminess to know when it's yes. done. Are we doing the same thing here? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you can see it's starting to stick right mm -hmm. to the outside. It, it'll start very clean because the fat is the only thing on the outside. Mm -hmm. But as it starts to emulsify, you're gonna get that kind of stickiness around the edges. But once I add in this water with the back toe firm, this is when the emulsification is really going to happen. So those proteins are going that are solubilized will mix in with the water and then the fat, which just has high amounts of fat. So if we get this going for about 30 seconds to a minute, this is the lo longest part of it because I just want to make sure that water isn't going to splash and then I can increase the speed. Okay. You may get a little uh, runaways, just toss them back in. <laughs> yeah. It and happens. And I think if you haven't watched our Umai Bag episodes before, we are going to link to them at the end of this episode because the, it's really an interesting technology that lets you dry age steaks at home, to, and to make sausages, and do all kinds of amazing stuff. We love the Umai Bags because before you needed like lots of special equipment, and now you don't need any. Except for the Umai Bags. <laughs> Great, so coming up uh, about 45 seconds it's here. It's getting very fragrant. In it here. is very fragrant. Mm -hmm. So we can see, and yes, the spices will, I'm just gonna move it out of the way so it's not falling all over the place. It's nicely emulsified. If you wanted to at this point, if you're making a new sausage, you would cook a little bit of this just to see if the seasoning is there. Mm -hmm. But this is perfect. Uh, I think it's going to look really, really beautiful. And all we have to do right now is take it and you can put it into an Umai bag, just like I said. If you just want to make a bulk one, go right for it. If you, for some reason, want to do like the, the large, you know, um, 
salami like charcuterie, you can absolutely do that as well. Mm -hmm. If you have a sausage press, do that. If not, this is the easiest way. All right. Okay. Well, I think we'll be right back and not stuff the sausage on camera because <laughs> it's going to get a little bit messy. But we'll be back with some beautiful finished plates and, of course, this week's giveaway. All right. And we're back with a few different ways that you can use the andouille. And, but first, I want to talk about this week's giveaway. In order to enter to win the giveaway, which will be a Umai casing pack, the 50 grams of the prog number no. 2 sodium caseinate, and either the fructose or dextrose of your choice in order to start making your own andouille at home, as well as other types of fun sausages. And in order to win, just enter in the comments below how you would like to cook the andouille in any dish of your choice. It's that easy. Now, Scott, I really like how you said that this particular sausage is so versatile and you can use it in a bunch of different ways. What did you come up with that you found was extra tasty? So any tomato sauce can benefit from andouille. So any tomato sauce that you would mix ground meat in or, or sausage or something like that, I just take andouille and as I'm sauteing my, my garlic, I just break up the andouille in there. It almost dissolves once you add in the um, add in the tomato. So that's mm -hmm. what I did here. This is basically uh, a good portion of andouille mixed in with some you know, tomato sauce and it's a great thickening agent too because mm -hmm. you're adding pretty much just, you know, uh, I don't want to say liquefied sausage, but it's a, it's a, uh, it's, you know, a spreadable sausage that just makes it super thick. It makes it super sticky and really bright, vibrant red color. Okay. Uh, and then we great. also did a few other things. So I made this sandwich here and it's almost kind of like a play on a banh mi. It has, you know, pickled vegetables on it, has some greens, but then I put the andouille as the spread in place of pate. And then I also took the andouille and I mixed it in with uh, a mayonnaise, a very savory mayonnaise. And uh, so there's a lot of andouille, you know, with other uh, pickled vegetables and cured meats in there. So uh, this sandwich looks insane. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take a big bite out of that. <laughs> Maybe we'll get it on camera later. But um, I wanted to just show you quickly. So I'm going to do a little bias here so we can get a good shot of it. You can see the color there is really deep red around the outside mm -hmm. and then on the inside it's a little orange perfectly fine all you have to do is take it now Janie and you can let me do it this way so you can take from there all and right. you can see this you can kind of just yeah you're basically it basically I think you just have pate and that seems yeah it's a little like firmer a but it definitely uh or a little more firm mm -hmm. but Definitely, you can spread it on crackers. You can put it right on a charcuterie plate, and it's going to work amazing. Wow. So maybe a little spicy. There is some hot paprika in there. Mm -hmm. um, it also depends on which brand of hot paprika. If you get, like, a true Italian one, it might be a little bit more mild, mm -hmm. but you can get some that are, like, not cayenne levels, but they could be pretty spicy. So. Yeah, there's so much flavor yeah. going on right now. It's really, <laughs> really tasty. I can definitely see. I mean, the pasta is all the way over there, so I'm not going to reach for it but it'll probably be amazing in the pasta as well. And it's super good. So I think if you like like spreading things and like, yeah. if you like pâtés, I feel like you would definitely like this. Yeah, it, it, it's just a, a spicy meat product that can be added to just about anything. Sauces, it, it works great. And because it, like I said, it almost dissolves and acts um, like a thickening agent. Yeah, so you can get these recipes on in the links in the description below as well as catch our other Umai Bag episodes as well on how do you make other types of sausages, dry aged steaks, etc. And until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin.